Hailing frequencies open, Captain James T. Lurch of the USS Enter Lurch here with another Captain's Log entry for Star Trek Encounter at Icefall. With me are our crew members, the Bendu, as Counselor Narset Jin. Set phasers to stunning. <laughs> Dan, as Chief Engineer Warham of Ithor. I can't give her any more, Captain. David, as First Officer Zavik Silverstar. Insert Riker here. <laughs> Riker. And of course, our host, Kyle Katarn, as Security Officer Zeke Fliegman. Beam us up, Scotty. Damn it, Gentlemen. man, I'm a Gungan, not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Engage. All right, let's roll some destiny, guys. Two lights from Warm, one dark from Narset. That's Zeke tough. coming in with two more That's lights. Dark, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we're going to have the camera return to the mountain where Narset and Kintera are currently pressed back against their seats at a 75 degree incline as the all-terrain exploration survey transport known as the Big Crab to the Sherpas climbs its way up the steepest point of the mountainside. Out the front windows, just past Kintera, you can see the piping arrangements and catwalks of the factory itself perched just below the rim of the volcano are growing large now through the transparency at the front of the craft. One of the Sherpas uh, is still keeping his balance and you can hear him scuttling there on the front of the transport. Uh, the other one stepped rather nimbly off and is just using his six legs and four arms to make his way at a fairly brisk pace what a straight boss. up the side of this mountain. Um, I feel like the they're guy, more like lobster. Friends. They are lobster, absolutely, and not like especially they're just these big crabs. Guys. They're yeah, just called crabs. Yep, they're they're crustacean guys, but they got like the big tail in back, and they are much more of like a lobster guy, and they're like a lobster centaur because like the front half is way more of like, yeah, like torso torso yeah. and shoulder like the SpongeBob character yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly yeah so they're they're pretty nimble and the uh, the one who's wearing the hide cloak uh, with a bundle of spears at his back is just walking up the side of this mountain next to the transport uh, while the uh, Sherpa in the poncho uh, with the uh, spear rifle is continuing to ride the big crab because, I mean, this is what technology is for, to get you places so that you're rested when you get there. And he's made this trip several times. Kintera looks back and asks, How much of the factory did Rathamitz show you the other day? Do you want to take a turn around the facility or should we head up to level ground? You know, I wasn't, we didn't really see too much of the facility. We were kind of just in like the elevator skiff thingy that just kind of went up. So whatever would be easiest for the Sherpas and the mechanism, or like the walker, I feel like it would be better for us to be on even ground before starting to do anything. I'm more interested about what the inside of the facility looks like and the potential innards of the volcano versus the outside of it. So let's just keep moving. She steers to the right and the transport begins to head away from the factory itself. So the bay where the city and the gas works, Fishtown are, are at the base of a very steep slope that leads up to the volcano, but there's a much less steep slope that is heading out along the other side of the bay where Fishtown isn't, with- Probably where the lava flow goes. Exactly. However, since the factory has been there hasn't been any lava flow, so... It's not like an active, active volcano. Kintera, it's, it's dormant. Right, if you, ask, if you ask Kintera about it, exactly. Uh, so as Narset starts to survey the surface of the volcano that the walker is going across, she notices around the circumference of the mountain that it does jet out and flatten. And then she looks over to Kintera and asks, is the only reason why Fishtown in the factory is on this side is because there's no lava on this side? I assume there's lava since it's a volcano. She says, It actually hasn't erupted since the factory was put into place. 
I think I mentioned earlier that I had access to the old mining guild record from when they set the facility up. I went and I talked to the foreman. I asked him as nicely as I could, and he told me he wouldn't let me look into any of the Hut clan's operations. But he allowed me to look at the original plans from when the mining guild set up the operation, and the array that they set up over the top, that apparatus, the three pylons with the collectors, are also some sort of mechanism that's going to keep the volcano from erupting. I looked into the science, I asked some colleagues. It's all rather sound, and it's the sort of thing that they use on multiple worlds for this sort of operation. So. It was set up safely enough. Uh, there haven't been any eruptions in the last 250 years. I don't know about the frequency before then, but the Salvac legend has regular mention of eruptions and volcanic activity. The whole purpose of their climb revolved around the danger of it. And she just goes out the window towards the factory and says, The biggest danger here is the security. She goes, Speaking of which, I can't get you inside the factory. She looks off out through the glass for a moment and then turns back with a gleam in her eye and says, I think we can get inside the mountain, though, if we're lucky. And then we're going to pull away from you guys and head back down to the docks. On Warham and Zeef, just as they're pulling up to the dock down there in Crabtown, things have changed in the hours since you've been there. There are six quarrants just hanging out around your speeder. One of them's leaning on Stomper. What? One of them's leaning on the speeder. The other four are milling around. Without a perception check, you can see that three of them have spears on their backs, and they're probably those rifle. The three leaners don't appear to be visibly armed, but the three guys that are standing around just waiting all have rifles on their back, and uh, they just stand there and wait. Better leave that gonk alone, boy. <laughs> um, ha have they Stomper seen us? gives out a... Oh, yeah, they've been standing They're there watching. waiting for you guys okay, to come okay. back. They are they are all eyeballing you with their <laughs> quarren, beady eyes as you guys pull up to the dock. Stomper gives a mournful gonk. <laughs> and the I... quarren who was leaning on him straightens up and gives him a little pat so that he can shuffle briskly along the dock towards you. Uh, what do you think, Warren? I have a feeling that, uh, somebody figured out who was at the, uh, warehouse the other night. Mm-hmm. They, they might have identified the speeder. Well, let's go say hello, sir. Zeef sort of waves a little bit, like, at, pretty animatedly over at them, like, Hello, are you still waiting for me? One of the yeah. Quarren who's leaning against your speeder straightens up. When he stands up, he's a half a head taller than the other corn, and maybe eight inches broader in the shoulders. And you recognize him as he raises his hand and goes, Hey, Zeefy. Long time no see, buddy. Why don't you come over here and talk? You uh, know this guy, Zeef? Um, can I do a like a perception check <laughs> to get some backstory on this guy? Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Good, good, good. So you shiver and take a point of strength okay. from both the cold and the memory as you recognize your old friend Dylon at the far end of the dock. This Morin has always been your largest friend. He was the muscle. He was the protector. He was the guy who went to go and talk to the Karkaro. And came back all pale faced. came to you. Yes, not because he was the smartest, but because he's always been the toughest. He's bigger than he was five years ago. Broader, even though it's freezing out here on the docks, he's only wearing an undershirt and pocketed pants. And you can see the straps of some kind of pack or bag or maybe webbing going over his shoulders. He's got a scar across his face that you don't remember that he probably picked up while he was in penal for whatever it is that the cartel got you and the boys for. And now, here he is standing across the dock from you. He is slowly walking down the dock towards you. And when the other Corrin make a move to follow, he turns and snaps at them. And they all take a step back from him. Zeef uh, puts one hand over his eyes, like to motion that he's looking a great distance. It says, Dylon? 
Is that Dylan Misa Paolo? Dylan Misa so smiling to see you, sir. It's been what five years? I ah, used to looking a lot, lot prettier than last time too. How have you <laughs> been, Paolo? Just gonna lay it on thick. <laughs> Smart. So we'll we'll All do right. uh we'll do a uh, a uh, charm check out of that. Oh, Let me for pull sure. up some stats. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I I I gotta leave it up to the dice. God, what was the party? Was sexual intimidation? Is that what the is that what the roll tag was? Mm -hmm. God, that was great. Mm -hmm. With the fucking tongue move. With well, tongue you failed with, the with advantage. So, Dylon's eyes darken and his brow falls. Uh oh. As he closes the gap with you, he says, "Zeef, Paolo, the time for smiling was five years ago. It's been too long, too many years in that hole. But we were friends. You got to stop sticking your nose." In the shark's business, buddy. Or we're not going to talk again. Zifa uh, drops the act, looks him dead in the eyes, and just says, They got to Yusa. They got to Yusa big time. They got me out of that hole, Zif. You know what, Zif? You weren't Griffin there. I'm making a check for my boy here, real quick. He's, he's losing himself. Oh, dear. Two threats and no successes on Dylon's role to maintain his composure. Uh -oh. And he says, You know what, Zeef? They did get to me. They took care of me. They got me out of that hole that you left us in. Let's see who your friends are when you come out of your hole. And now we're going to roll some initiatives. All right, so yeah. We got three for Zeef, and we got two for more. Dylon. Get nothing. I like what I'm hearing so far. The first group of coins get four, and the second group of coins get a one and a one. Yeah, so cool. so Dylan goes... We'll see what kind of friends get you out of the hole we put you. And then... Get them, boys. Yep. Let's go. And the guys at the far end, they're going to maneuver forward, and uh, second maneuver, pull out their blaster rifles as they come up to short range of you guys. Zeef is going to use a maneuver to reach up very quickly and grab one of the oh. tentacles on Dylan's face. That's going to be an attack. Okay, so that would be Brawl? Yes, that would be Brawl. Sounds, um, sounds you're gonna good use to me. Your, you're going to use your maneuver to close to engaged range with him while you do that. Okay. Um, and grab him. Then a Brawl attack to grab him. Let's see if you nab him. So you've grabbed him up by the tentacle. You get a, you can take a free maneuver with those advantages if you want to pull your blaster now. I'm going to use my maneuver to get the blaster. Pull ready the relby. Yep, exactly. Okay. So Zeef surges forward, pulls Dylon face down to his by the tentacles, and pulls out his blaster rifle with his free hand. There's a sharp grrr before Dylon's beak snaps shut just in front of your mouth. Warham, all of this has gone down very quickly and turned violent. Pretty fast. What are you going to do? All right, so uh, Warham is going to use a maneuver to hop back in the skiff. He sees that it's about to go down, and yeah, so he's thinking uh, we might need to make a quick getaway, uh, and it looks like uh, Leaf is already taking matters into his own hands. Maybe we can get a a hostage or something out of this and get him on the on the thing. So, uh, I don't have Let's Ride. I was just going to ask, so you have to use another so maneuver I, to I start it up? I have to use up. another maneuver to start it up. Um, I th yeah, I'll do that. I don't really, I don't think I have anything else I can do with an action. Right that now. is fun. He's outmanned right now. The minions are going to hustle over here behind the pump as they're making their way towards everyone else. Round. They're making their way down the main dock and toward your particular jetty, but they've only made it halfway. Yeah, I don't have anything I can, else I can do with my action, so I'll just use my action okay. as a maneuver and uh, sure. start up, start up the ship. Or, yeah, so now it's it's on and running and ready to go. All right, Dylon, to get out of your grab, he's going to have to win a brawl verse. Brawl, I think. It brawl. Is. Yeah, your brawl becomes the difficulty of his brawl check 
What the Wisa chopping off this time? Brawl. Your finger? Your ear? Oh, it's with a, a failure and a threat, he does not get away no. from it. Yes. Nice. He's gonna take Bomb bad. Nice. Um, I should have buffed his brawl. He's a big guy. He should have four. I'll do. I'll do it. He's just a big time, bitch. You know. <laughs> um. All right. So he doesn't get out, and that's the end of the round. So we go okay. back to the. We go to the top of round two. All right. Well, the other minions are gonna go, and because you are. Each just has home field advantage right now. Now, grappling the boss, uh, they're gonna come in and they're gonna stab you with spears oh, instead oh. of shooting you with blaster rifle because they can do both and you don't shoot somebody who's engaged in a melee. Combat with your boss. Sure. Right. Yeah, exactly. So... And they triumphantly... No! But fail. Do not succeed. Yes! They don't, <laughs> they don't stab you, but triumphantly they disengage you from the boss ah! as you have to whirl away from them out of engage away from their spear. Okay. And they put themselves between you and Dylon. And the boss. Okay. Who laughs and goes, CZ, it's good to have friends. We used to be friends. These are my new friends. With the spear on and everything, I would now like to maneuver it uh, kind of like He's gonna like try and like drift basically in between Zeef and the corns to kind of like force them like. like oh, you're going up over like, the dock. Nice. Yeah, like okay. over the dock and like you know use the repulsor lifts to kind of like like push him back like as he like slides into place kind of thing. Oh, I. It's, um, a, it's a, like a J turn kind of shit. You know? yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. But you're doing it between five people well, and a droid. Well, so he's, he's, Two of oh, which you yeah. care about. No, no, I know. So I, that's why I was saying, like, I want to come in between, and I'm, I'm trying to basically, like, have them be, like, in, so intimidated by, like, oh, holy shit, and, like, you know, they, like, go, like, even if the repulsor blast doesn't hit them, they're, like, you know, on their asses, because... He's like, trying to, yeah, come what the fuck through. Just happened? <laughs> so I got the skip, okay? Yeah. Give us the skip. recreation here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come through, you Zeef's here, over. and he wants to come around so that Zeef can get in, and all these guys are blown away. I understand, yeah. of course. Yeah. But and they just fire okay. the engines to blow. I get you. That's right. Awesome. So, so it's gonna be a formidable check. It's not just hard to do this. This okay. is a formidable task. Okay. With this is Tokyo. Drift. An upgrade with two setbacks from the cold, with a bonus from Zeef because he's jumping out of the way. I hope with. His oh yeah, oh yeah. Maneuver. Oh Failure. My God. So you don't succeed and with a threat. You uh bump your way along the dock. And the skiff just isn't it's, this is a or you can't yeah. yeah, it's not coming up over the pilings of like the dock itself. I don't manage to get it between them. I just kind of move up and can I say that I'm now short from everybody? Sure. Like or from from the corner from the yes, because you have moved there. down. You can use your maneuver to do that. You know what I mean. So I I try and I try and like hop the dock and get the skiff above it, but I'm unable to. So uh, he calls out as he passes by. Hop in. Z responds to warm. We see coming, and uh, uses his comm link to get Stomper to head towards the skiff. Stomper, you know, dutifully stomps off, um, and okay. then. I'm going so you to use a maneuver to command Stomper, and he uses his maneuvers to get in the skiff. And then, okay. so that's my maneuver done. And then, with my action, I'm going to shoot my Relby at the power cable that three of these four corns are standing on right now. Nice. nice. What you, what you, what you got? You fail with two advantages. You miss, but you can take a free maneuver if you'd like. Sweet. I'm going to jump in the skiff. Well, yep. he already took two maneuvers because you made a called shot, which is an aim oh, maneuver, true. and oh, you okay. ordered That's Stomper. Aim. You can't yeah. take a third maneuver. Never um, mind, then. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, so you missed the uh, the cable at their feet, but 
instead they're kind of they're kind of doing the uh, like the western like hot step hot yeah. foot thing. Like so they're, they're like jumping they're, like, away from jumping where around you shot. from where where you shot on the floor near them. If that works, <clears throat> that works yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I'm still standing on the dock though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because they also don't want to be like power thing if it does happen to blow up too. So they'd mm -hmm. be like, oh, should we gotta go? The Quarrens of Minion Group do? Blue see that you've jumped oh, in no, the no. skiff and turned it around, oh, so they so use a maneuver to run back over to your speeder and then use their action as a second maneuver to jump into your speeder. Ooh, so they're steep. Man, this uh, guy Dylon. We had like we had some good times. We used to be really I tight. Know. There are fond memories, and I'm gonna kill the fuck out of him right now. He's not yeah. changing range there, so you know he's moving in front of these minions here, but he's not using a maneuver to change range bands. He's just stepping in front of his eyes, and his maneuver is to unlimber from his back a heavy flame projector. Oh, he goes, Zeef, you must have forgotten. The Dylon spits hot fire! And he's going to try to roast your little frog legs here, Zeefy. Oh, noes! How wooed! Misa, uh, Misa so not trying to get a, hit with the flamethrower. Uh, with two successes and one threat, you are going to take 12 damage. Uh, you can soak that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. How much of that do you soak? Five. So you take seven wounds as the flames wash over you. All right. So uh, minion group green are going to shoot at the uh, flames in an attempt to disable it. They fail. Uh, with two advantage, they rush forward with their spears just after as Dylon's flames wash by. Zeef, get on! Zeef doesn't respond, but he does, like, he sort of, I don't know, like, looks at Warm as he says that to acknowledge, like, I hear you. Um, then turns back to the two approaching Quarren, and I'm just going to open fire at the closest one. Like, in the Four success and an advantage. So they soak five points of damage and take eight, and one of the Quarren soldiers falls dead. I call out, um, I call out over the clamor, that's one less friend, Dylan. Drop him fast. You're like, your friends are shitty. Yeah, right. <laughs> Should have made better friends in the can. And then I'll use my remaining maneuver to just jump into the skiff so we can get the fuck out of here. And, uh, Worm uh, tells him to uh, buckle up, and then he's uh, going to take off over the ice. All right, uh, excellent. All right, so Worm guns it. All right, I am going to use a destiny point to give a point of skill to the minions who are trying to hotwire your, uh... I guess. Yes, exactly. There are three yes, minions, yeah. then? Is he had good? five. Zeef killed one of the three that were on the docks. There were two more in the skiff, and they don't have any skullduck. And they succeed with a threat as one of them gets zapped ah! by your security <laughs> system. But nice. the courier land speeder fires light. Up. Underneath them, uh, they use a maneuver to come down, and Dylon is gonna leap in, leaving the rest of his guys. And we're gonna pull out of the map as Dylon and his two quarries accelerate out over the ice after your skiff, which is peeling out towards the Ravnak infested ice. Back the way bed. we came, pretty much, right? Back exactly. In the You're heading back out. Yep. Yeah. You're yep. gonna come the waters later. Coming it twice today, man. We're gonna need a bigger boat. You know what? If you get it used to eating quarren now, it'll make things a lot simpler later. Uh, all right, we're gonna move the camera away from you guys, and as the camera returns to Narset Jin, Kantera's exploration survey transport has made its way up to the ice shelf that slopes down and away to the east from the volcanic peak leading down to the far side of the bay from Fishtown, uh, around the point from the native city. The top of this tiny island, this much less steep slope leading down, is also accessible to the windward side of the island. Both of the Salvax shirts have dismounted. 
Uh, you can see a large ice boulder here uh, just off to the left side of the walker. And Kintera frowns as she sees that more weather is ready to move in and encompass the walker itself now that it has finally made the top of the ice shelf here. She looks back and uh, says, Don't worry, we'll be fine. And then reaches up and flips the heaters into overdrive and says to herself, As long as we don't fall off the mountain. <laughs> um, and then the weather blows in entirely and the interior of the walker becomes very dark as the light from outside is cut off by the swiftly blowing snow. One of the Kintera taps another switch and the interior lights come on. And she says, Would you mind helping me with a lookout? There's an observation bubble just up there. She gestures towards the hatch in the ceiling. I guess it's access for a turret on the militarized version of this. Narset looks over to Kintera and, and asks, is there something specifically you're wanting to see through the weather, or what would I be looking for, theoretically? The path ahead, so that we don't step off any cliffs up here. It's not exactly even terrain. We're heading that way. She points forward into the swirling snow. You know, generally westerly. We'll see how close we can get to the edge of the ice sheet. I've never made it all the way to the top of the slope that leads down to the native village. Usually there's weather, or I get turned around, or I run into I some got you. ice apes, but maybe we'll get lucky this time. It would help if you would help me look through this snow. Well, I don't need a periscope to help look through the snow. I start to swirl my hands together as I'm making the Winds of Tomb spell, and I use the Force Power Altar to make a clear weather bubble completely around the walker. Awesome. Well, you rolled four dark side pips there, Nar. So if you want to make it work, you're going to have to flip a destiny point and take some strain. And if you're going to want to make it work at longer range, you're going to have to take even more strain. That Absolutely. was four st or three strain, I guess, right? Three, three uh, it is there. three strain and three it's conflict destiny. and just flipping a destiny point. point just to do it that one time. But you showed off. You do your Daphneri spell. Some green sparks begin to follow your hands as they spin around yourself. And when you finish, the clouds, the final ones that rolled in over the walker as it made its way to the crest are pushed back as if by a gust of wind and divert around the space where you are. But all of the terrain in front of you remains occluded by the driving snow. The Salvax Sherpas move out in front and begin to maneuver down a short rocky ledge towards the edge of what is basically a wall of driving, blowing snow and wind at the edge of this bubble of calm that you have created. I was going to say, couldn't I call out to one of the Salvax and ask them to stand at the edge of the cliff as for us to know? Like, I need you to traffic cone yourself real quick and just, like, stand where the drop-off is so we know that we're not going to drop off on the ship. All right, so you pop yourself up out of the hatch. It is bitterly cold out here. Narset pops her head out. And asks one of them to stand at the edge of the cliff so we know what our movement limitations are. The Salvax in the high cloak clambers back up the short cliff and stands at the edge of it and wearily gestures with one of his spears. The Salvax in the poncho moves forward to the edge of this bubble of clear weather that you've created uh, and pulls a pair of goggles off of the belt he's wearing across his chest and reaches up over his antenna and pulls them down and fits them over his eyes. Once you clang the hatch shut behind you, Quintera reaches up and plucks the mic off the commune above her and says, You know, you could have just talked to them through the megaphone. And then pitches it back up. Uh, she drives the ATTE uh -huh. past the native Sherpa and uh, maneuvers it past this cliff down a slope and approaches the edge of the driving wind and snow. 
And Tara looks uh, over her shoulder and says, So, how many times a day can you do that spell? I thought you were a Jedi. Yeah, I was raised by witches. Uh, the weather thing, well, I wasn't sure if you wanted to stay in this one area and look around or where exactly we were going. So I can't, I can't do the weather thing too many times or I'll pass out from exhaustion. You see that she's taken her hands off the control and is, again, just blatantly entering notes about your private information into a data pad that she pulled out of a pocket on the hip of her pants. She takes a moment to step down out of the driver's harness and join you in the uh, forward cabin of the walker. And she reaches over to a counter and pulls open a drawer. She pulls a gel pack out and says, Would an electrolyte pack help? <laughs> Uh, it's a kind or is it like a never tried it before. wizard thing? Um, let's just describe it as a wizard thing. She shrugs and says, Okay, these are really strong though. It's like one of those mental and physical tired. So this might help my body, but I might still be just like mentally drained. She shrugs, uh, plucks the straw off the package. But, um, yeah, I wasn't, again, I wasn't sure how much we were traveling, where exactly our destination was. I'm curious to see what these, what the local wildlife is like, since we, you know, need Sherpas with spears. And you've mentioned before of, like, things getting in the way of your previous explorations. She pauses and then raises an eyebrow at Kintera. She sips her electrolyte pack at you, <laughs> and then says well you said you were a jedi when i said two days i figured you could go the whole time without resting she sets the empty package down on the counter and then hops back up into the piloting harness and moves the walker towards the edge of the driving wind and snow she says ready to go again narset looks over to kintera and asks well since you have the crazy invention of the loudspeaker, we can ask our Sherpa friends to just stay in front of us to try to, you know, guide our steps and our parameters. The spell doesn't travel. Other spells do. This one doesn't. I can also- I am a Jedi. Just everyone has a backstory. I mean, what were you before an archaeologist? An archaeology student. You see she's entering something about a refractory period into her data pad and then returns it to her pocket. She clacks something very guttural into the microphone. Uh, like her own voice? She's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, uses uh, her own, she uses her own voice to imitate crab speak. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a fleck, basically. You know, like, she's like, I was an archaeology student, and then she goes and, like, talks crab people to them. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, she's a fucking archaeologist. So you're not going to do more force for her. and She's just going to ride into the snow, and that's fine. Yeah, no, I was, um, like, if we needed one of those boulders to be moved out of the way. Sure, of course. Kintera drives forward until so the Sherpa holds up his spear above his head. And Kintera eases off the controls. Ahead, you can see two large bird ice lizards. They are at the top of a short rise of, you know, another one of these short cliffs. Then they are going to disappear by just crouching down and moving off to each side uh, because they have the advantage of the terrain here and are used to this driving storm. We're going to roll some initiative because they are, you know, you know they're there, but they're going to try to get the drop on you anyway because they're not smart enough to realize you've seen them, basically. Kintera goes, You said you were a Jedi. Uh, how are you with a lightsaber? This is the other reason I was hoping to bring the two of you along. These ice lizards, they're part of the reason why I've never made it to that other village. The Sherpas are good, but eventually we have to turn back every time. She uh, raises her eyebrows, hopefully at you, but she doesn't make a check or anything to try to coerce or, you know, charm you into it. She's just basically saying, this is part of being on the expedition. You know, I'm driving the walker, they're defending the walker. I you couldn't, You couldn't cast your spell again. How about the Jedi stuff? 
Uh, I look over to Kintera and ask her how many of those electrolyte juice bags she has, and then look outside to try to get her uh, get a better sense of where the lizards are. And before any sort of initiative gets thrown, I will use uh, the forewarning Gandalf power of pick up right. arms. And what does that do? It gives all my allies within medium range an increased defense boost okay, until, so they what's act, the... until they act in the encounter. Okay, so it gives them plus one defense until they act? Yes. Cool. The Salvax rolled really well on their initiative, but they're natives. Um, can they're, uh, and they haven't attacked yet. Hers. So, no, plus... yeah, we're still rolling no, initiative. I'm small and You got cool. no success. You go last, Narset. That's fine. Because I also have my the force is my ally, where I can give myself two strain and perform One, X number of force two, powers as a maneuver. So I will take all that strain to do all the moves. <laughs> um, so Kintera, seeing that she's about to hit this boulder, is making a piloting check to try to wheel the walker around and up this rise here. Yeah. She succeeds with three threat at her piloting check. Uh, however, with three threat, one of the, uh, no, absolutely not. One of the, uh, monsters Big, yeah. jumps down off of this cliff that he's on and lands right on top of the outer hull of the tank. You hear him clang off of the plating just above your head. Kintera gives out a, uh, yelp from the pilot chair. The Salvax go. The traditionalist Salvax is throwing his spear at the monster that just jumped down on top of the tank. Uh, and he fails with a threat. The spear clangs off the plating next to the creature, but doesn't strike it. And the Salvax Sherpa is going to take a point of strain when it happens, uh, which is a wound towards him. So that's not very good for you. Salvax uh, with the rifle doesn't have a shot from behind. So he's going to use both his maneuvers to uh, come around towards the front of the walker on the other side of it. The monster on top, you can hear it lumping around up there and it gives out a loud piercing bellow that cuts right through the house. And you hear it return several times over from both directions. Uh, I'm definitely going to use Force Bind on the lizard person that's on top of the walker. So I'm going to listen to it tapping on the ceiling. Narset reaches her hand up and Force chokes the ice lizard. Two light sides and three dark side Force points, as well as a triumphant three successes. So... Map is Triumphantly, so well, this. we're gonna roll on a table to see what that critical miss psychopath. <laughs> um, crit 95. The target suffers an additional strain every time he performs an action as you bring this creature to the brink. Are you popping your other light side to also disorient it? Yeah, sure. Okay, so then it's disoriented for two rounds and it takes four strain every time that it takes an action. Um, okay. I'm gonna knock itself out. The other Gorgodon charges the traditionalist Salvax who threw his spear. He comes out of the blowing snow and ice at the edge of visibility, right between the boulder and the cliff. He charges in with a gaping maw with several rows of teeth and massive taloned hands and rolls. So he fails, but with three advantage, he loops up onto the hull of the walker next to the other ice lizard. That is the end of round one, and we're gonna leave the combat hanging there. And uh, I think we can close it up there, guys.